ticket for the football game or get the basketball game for free. Oh, wow. I like that. Yeah. Coach, is the way that you started yesterday going to be the way that you started on Saturday? Uh, not sure about that yet. One of the best problems we have is a lot of depth. And we've got four or five more practices, and we're trying different combinations. I imagine that we'll be looking at three or four different combinations throughout the preseason. And obviously we want to kind of maybe settle in something by conference play, but with the uh, variety of um, uh, minor injuries, guys getting healthy, guys playing well one week, maybe looking at lineups. We, we have the ability to tweak a little bit, but we started two different lineups already. <laughs> in two halves uh, with Chris Eversley in the first half and then going to Drake U, you just get a little more experience in our defense and it really, really helped us in the second half. What did you, uh, what did you learn from your team and, and what needs to get better by Saturday? Well, there's a big difference in our first half to second half performance. The biggest thing we learned is just trying to make sure we have a combination of players that have already been involved in our defense, our matchup defense. Having too many guys who are first-year learners, um, it's hard for them to get the concept down exactly. When we balanced those those groups up, then they both had an equal number of new guys and and returners. And so when we had Drake as a on that first group, then it was able to bring Chris Eversley in as a sub with Will Donahue, who's really experienced in that back row, um, and having a guy like Jamal and Malik Love, who are both really experienced at the guard spots. When when we have different guys in there, so just having that balance of returners. And, and the second half, we went on a, a seven-minute run holding them scoreless just because we were very solid. And then we were able to explode. And then when the second group came in, we were able to extend a lead. And when the other group came back in, we were you know, up by 20. I think it was 61 to 41 or something like that when we looked out there and said, okay, that's really what we wanted. From being tied in the half to making some changes and adjustments to being ahead by 20, it's key for us. Your, uh, your non-conference just isn't as important as your conference schedule. Well, important for us to accomplish um, a variety of tempos. You know, in the Big West, we're going to see super athletic teams that, that will play some uh, full court denying basketball. We're going to see teams that have small lineups that will try to press and, and play real fast like Irvine. Uh, we've got to see what uh, new coaches at uh, uh, programs outside. You know, Irvine's still kind of uh, identifying themselves. But then again, with UC Davis having a new coach, trying to see what their style is. So we've got to be prepared. We try to find a mix of schedule that has teams that have different styles. We just want to learn how we need to play, what personnel we need to play against, what teams that really give us advantage. If it's a real zone team, do we have – you know, options that really have you know enough shooters in. Is it a real athletic team? Which guards can break down penetration and get to the rim? Um, so I think it's, it's a great. I mean, the setup at, at this level is so great because we don't start until January, and so we get all these great preseason games there with different guys and do some traveling as well to kind of get ourselves road ready, as as it would be, and then bringing in a great team like St. Mary's and saying, okay, here's a team top 40 in the nation is could be the number one or two, you know, one of the top five teams on the West Coast. Um, having that type of talent in the gym helps us prepare for uh, the great talent in the Big West, too. And finally, San Jose State, what do you know about them? Well, San Jose State, we know that they, they, uh, Coach Nesson has done a great job building a program for the last uh, six, seven years where he's done a steady job of improving each year. And I think they had 17, 18 wins this last year. Um, we're we're a, a good, solid WAC team, mid-level WAC team that's climbing up. Um, they usually have a couple bigs that we really will, uh, you know, grind it and get second chance opportunities. Some quick guards that can score off the bounce. And for us, what we do is got to get those guards under control, and then we've got to be able to control some boards. We got to at least ne be neutral on the boards. And they, they have a little more size and length than we do, so it's going to be, you know, blocking off early and far out is going to be critical for us. Coach, you guys got kind of an early jump on the season with the Costa Rica trip, the ten days that you practiced. Uh, so considering that, we're, you know, this first game was kind of your first game. Right. Yeah, I think it was. I think what was showed because we were able to, because we took that trip earlier. I think that you saw what benefits can happen with that trip in the second half. Last year we played a couple D two teams and we lost to one of them and we we barely beat the other one. This year, because of our experience and familiarity with each other, it wasn't completely new to them. And so when we made our changes, it was some familiarity and and, and okay, we'll make this change and this change. And so I think that you could see the success. Now, unfortunately, San Jose State went on a 
international trip as well, as so did USC, and, and, and so you look through, I think three or four of the teams in our front of the roster came off international trips, so I don't see any great advantage early in the year when we're playing against teams that also had 10 practices and, and, and three, four, five games. So we're looking at, the, ironically, San Jose State played Notre Dame Day and Amir as their exhibition game two nights earlier than us. And so we, we're almost dead even in the, nation, in the notion that we both had international trips. We both had an exhibition game under our belt. And, and now hopefully that we have a little home court advantage. Uh, maybe we can shoot the ball a little better in them and, and, and pull out a victory. Sure. Well, you know, the, the plus was they're really coachable. The, the minus is that they haven't done it under fire. We, you can practice something. My analogy at the end of the game was and you can work on, if you're an actor and you're, you're on stage, you can work on your lines all you want in your bedroom and we're looking in the mirror, but until you have an audience in front of you, then that changes. So you have a tendency to go back to your natural reactions. And some of the things that we do in our defense or what we do in our offense, asking to pass and cut versus pass and stand, you know, your whole life in open gym, you pass and stand. And your whole life when you're playing a guy one-on-one, -on -one, you, you try to cut him off the spot. Well, we don't cut, cut guys off. We, we, we drill them to one spot and then try to step and close the gate. So you can drill that, but once the referees come out and once the fans come out, you have a tendency to go back to your habit. So the first half, we had a lot of have, habit relapses. And then this, the second half was kind of like, okay, okay, I got to get back to that. And, and then we really saw the success with that. So I think that's a, that's a big part that we've got to be able to kind of build upon that and, and, and continue to stay with the, the, uh, the fundamentals that we drill under fire. You know, it's different when there's, there's a crowd and hopefully we have a great crowd on Saturday for the doubleheader. It would have been a, it would have been a break it would have been a breakout. <laughs> so it's just still kind of a work in progress, I guess, in terms of yeah. the new We pressed, uh, we picked up full court uh, probably twenty possessions. And um, what it did, it worked with our defense in, in unison, you know, we didn't necessarily press to uh, make them shoot real fast. We pressed to eat the clock up and we pressed and if we can get something out there. Um, but it was it was uh, 29 at half, and then we probably had the opportunity to score a couple more in the last minute, but obviously we weren't trying to run it up the throat. Once we were ahead 61 to 41, I think we were content with playing the game out. But we really want to look at not losing our defensive identity, but still trying to get over 60. We don't really want to try to be, you know, try to win 52 to 49. If we can win 64 to 48, 50, 55, and still keep people under 60 and ourselves creep over 60. I think that will give us that little more Al McGuire line I love, spurtability. And, it's not, and that's what we had. We had, we had that, the, the time in which we went on a 12 to 2 run, and we, we had six or eight points real quick to, to put the game out of reach and go from a, a standard position of tied to ahead by six or eight. So they take their time out to go ahead by eight to 10, and then it's, boom, had another spurt, and we, suddenly we're ahead by 20 points. And that's what's key for us this year is having that ability to have. In a game, there's usually three spurts, and a team that gets two of the three wins a game. And if you look at it, it's usually three good runs. So that's our focus. You were talking about your depth uh, a few minutes ago. And, I mean, you, know, you look at your roster, and, I mean, you know, usually you, can, you, know, you see the five, six, seven, eight guys, and then there's the kind of the bottom guys. It looks like this entire team, we've seen these guys all play in yep. a few minutes. I mean, how are you going to get all these guys into the game? And, I mean, is that – it, it's potentially the greatest problem every coach in the world ever wants to have. It's you always want to have enough good players, and we finally three years feel like we have, you know, down to the thirteenth man can come in the game and contribute. And we keep telling them, hey, there's going to be a time and place. There's, with, with the game of basketball, injuries, illness, foul trouble, there's going to be a chance that someone's going to have to bide their time and wait, but their opportunity is going to happen. Matt Titchnell came off the bench last year at Pacific, was able to give us a spark. So Kyle Ottister still got rust on him, and you know he gets you know hasn't played for 14, 15 months, but he could contribute for us. So, you know our strengths will always be your weakness at all the time. Right now we have enough good players that can contribute. I love that problem right now. Yeah, because you know obviously the cliche, you know, I and team and all that good stuff. But people want to play. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. It's tough for guys that, I mean, they're good. players that may have played in the years past here uh, or played last year. Sure. Years. Well, ho hopefully they, they, they enjoyed being second place last year. 
and realize a lot of guys, you know, had their opportunity last year. Malik Love was a, you know, starter last year. Now Amari Furman's our starting point guard, so he's back down behind Amari and, and limiting his minutes right there. And he's got to be able to come out and practice and say these these games are my these games these practices are my games, and it, and it elevates the entire team. If you look at USC football, I think that they set up a tone that was unbelievable there. Then they had three or four quarterbacks, three or four running backs, and they made practices so competitive at those positions, offensively, defensively. I don't think people ask USC football too many times how that's going to be a problem. You look like those are the problems we want to have, we got to have. Our program to go to another level has got to have guys on the bench that feel like they could and should play. That means you got some depth that, hey, you know what, in this given night we can raise up. And most importantly, what it does to practice as the year goes on. So it's a good problem to have, and of course everybody wants to play. We want them to want to play. If they don't want to play, they're not the right guys to recruit. We want them to compete against that and elevate the competitiveness at every position, all game, every practice. They're down there now going, man, boy, i got to look over my shoulder. This guy's coming right behind me. That gets you into that sense of urgency that all games need to be in.